Hey, how's it going, everybody? RC Maxfield here for the Back to 12 podcast. And of course, I am beside, well, you know who he is, second behind Michael Crabtree and career touchdowns at Texas Tech. Of course, that's Lyle. Lyle, how you doing, man? Oh, man, blessed to be in your presence, brother. You know, um, like I say on the podcast every week, um, just trying to, you know, keep you out of harm's way. I know uh, CBS and uh, uh, ESPN and uh, ABC, all those those people are trying to get at my man, Skip Bayless and um, uh, Stephen A. I think he tried to follow me on Twitter, but I blocked him. Um, and so, you know, who doesn't trying, have that man blocked at this man. point? Who That's doesn't have this? Statement. That's true statement. So, you know, I just want to put that out there, um, you know, stay off my mess. Podcast is going good. Blessed to get another one rocking. There you go. You've been doing well. I know that uh, we were talking about brackets before my dogs rudely interrupted the first attempt at recording. Luckily, it was only two minutes in. Um, can't get mad at them, though. You can't get mad at a Husky and a wiener dog. You know what I'm saying? It's just you can't do it. Um, but we were talking about our brackets a little bit, and I saved this story for the podcast. So I'm in a podcast group, much like everybody else on ESPN, I would assume, CBS, whatever platform you're using. And uh, it's with my girlfriend's family. And I'm known as the sports guy in the family, both families and everything, which makes a lot of sense. I work in sports and, you know, cover sports, all that kind of stuff. And um, guess who's dead last out of the human beings in the bracket? Well, I was going to say myself. No, it's uh, me. I promise you I'm worse. I <laughs> promise. Um, I, I don't I haven't looked at it um, recently, but um, the last time I checked, I was like, 16 million 486 thousand 200 something um in terms of placing so um you know the old saying is true lyle where if you fill out a bracket you might as well just you know not know anything about sports because you're better off that way um the only to be fair though in the in the family league that i'm doing the only uh bracket that is below me is that of a dog so cool yeah your brackets however good bad ugly um ugly is not the word um atrocious yeah that's that's probably closer um for me like i said i feel like um i've caused a lot of um damage uh i feel like if i picked the team they lost so i just want to apologize to everyone so it's Uh, your fault got it yeah i'll take full credit for that um i got to do better I got to do better. I think next year I'm going to go on every team that I pick. I'm going to choose the opposite. And I should be at the top of the brackets. Don't trust your gut. No. Just don't do it. Stupid. Um, it's always wrong, especially when you're filling out a bracket. It, it, it always is. Because what, what stupid person picks Gonzaga to win the national championship? Obviously, everybody, including myself. I don't know. I'm just I'm still a little salty about it that I'm only beating a dog in this league. Also, not to mention, we put our podcast bracket together. I might need to check this out. Yeah, because we're at. I need to I need to see what's going on here um, in terms of the tournament challenge, um, because I I'll be honest with you, Lyle. I had no confidence that I would do good in this. I knew everybody would beat me. I really did, because. I never do well at brackets, but I enjoy them. I think I did one really good bracket one year, and it was when uh, Duke won the national title um, with, like, Okafor and all those guys. Um, but outside of that, pretty, pretty, pretty abysmal um, when it comes to this. Um, but, yeah, I, I just wanted to put this bracket together, this challenge to have get to with us here on the podcast, a bunch of people that listen to us. Um, and everything like that. I just, I just wanted to put it together and see exactly, you know, where did the people stand? You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, how much smarter are these people than me? Not you, because you probably are still better than me at this. Trust me. But how much smarter than me are they? Um, and let's go in here, shall we? The Back to 12 podcast here. Hmm. I am ranked 50 plus on this. Um. I'm trying to find you in here. Um, do you know yeah. where you are? Uh, probably at the back next to you, brother. Okay. I'm 50 plus. Um, I'm trying to find my bracket in here. Um, I, I, I'm geez. I'm 115 deep. Still nothing. Um, oh, 
I am tied for 152nd. It's not bad. Yeah, I mean, I mean out of 229 people. You know, yeah. you know what they say, if you're not first, you're last. So, I mean, well, I'm all, definitely yeah. closer to last, man. You know, I think we all are, you know. Yeah, just brutal, just brutal. But on today's podcast, we'll talk about Texas Tech basketball. And hey. their season didn't go according to plan um, in terms of the NCAA tournament. But we'll talk about if it was a success or not. We'll also um, talk to you all about Kevin McCuller, who is going to try and go into the NBA draft. And if he does return to college, will it be to Texas Tech? And then we will also talk about Terrence Shannon Jr., who will enter the portal. And I will tell you right now, Lyle, I do not see um, a lot of avenues for him to return to Texas Tech. I think that he will be going someplace closer to home. Um, I'll give my prediction on that later. But let's talk about Texas Tech as they did in their season in the Sweet 16 against Duke, who did go on to win the West region um, and coach K will face off against Hubert Davis in North Carolina for the first time in the NCAA tournament, the tobacco road rivalry, but Texas tech lost to Duke 78, 73 Texas tech gave up the most points that they have given up in a half this year against Duke in the second half. They gave up 49 points and Duke did not miss a shot um, in the final eight minutes. I mean, it, it was an absolute clinic by Duke in terms of offensive efficiency, and they did exactly what the Red Raiders don't allow teams to do um, very frequently. But instead, Duke will move on to the Elite Eight. They did beat Arkansas, and then they uh, will now play in the Final Four down to New Orleans. Coach K's farewell tour will have a chance at a NCAA championship if he can beat their old rivals in North Carolina. But overall, with Texas Tech, Lyle, when you – think back at this this season right we we talked about it before on the podcast in terms of what happened around this time last year right with coach beard we're um going on the one year anniversary of that if i would have told you at this time last year or i guess probably 10 days from now that texas tech in his first season mark adams would make the sweet 16 would you call that a success yeah i think uh <clears throat> I think you got to realize, and, and I think people uh, have kind of gotten spoiled over the last couple of years and, um, you know, people saying it's a disappointment, this, that, and other. Anytime you make the NCAA tournament, first and foremost, is a successful season. Um, anytime that you're ranked in the top 25, it's a successful season. And I think sometimes people get to the point, you know, I remember a time when we were going to the games, like I said, show up in the second half and sit on the second row. Um, yep. where we weren't making the NCAA tournament, where we weren't winning. So um, you, people got to understand it's a successful season when they, the, the fact that they got to go. And uh, just watching this, I hope people understand, um, you know, everybody has rankings, but at the end of the day, it's who executes. I, I really, that's the greatness of March Madness is it doesn't matter how good you are, who the giant is, David and Goliath. At the end of the day, you get one opportunity, whoever executes the best, um, holds their composure the most, usually wins the game. Sometimes some crazy stuff happens, uh, but I think we got to realize as fans, you know, not to take that stuff for granted because, like I said, we had a new coach. Um, we had a bunch of new players, and they came together and reached way further than people thought. No one predicted that they would make it this far um, from the beginning of the season. Now, as they got momentum, people were like, oh, yeah, man, they're good, da da da, da. But that's, this wasn't like they weren't on the radar. Um, they had every obstacle against them and they and they did a great job. So I think we need to be appreciative as fans for that, because, um, like I said, we've been waiting kind of when it comes to football to have a, succeed, a season where we go to the bowl game and we win a bowl game and, and do all that and others. So it can it cannot be there at the drop of a dime. So, uh, you know, we need to give credit to to everyone that was involved. Um, you know, they did a great job. And those kids, like I said, they deserve they deserve it all. And um I'm super proud to be a Red Raider. Yeah, I think that, you know, I didn't know what to expect uh, when Mark Adams got hired. I, I've told the story before that I was covering the press conference and I knew it was going to work, right? I just didn't know how much time it was going to take or if there was going to be a drop-off. Um, but, I mean, I'll, I'll argue this with anybody, anywhere. Texas Tech is in a much better spot now, I think, um, with Mark Adams 
one year in than they would have been if Coach Beard stayed. And the reason I think that is, is because you would have had that looming cloud over your head. Is Coach Beard going to leave? Is he going to leave? And now you know you have the guy, and he's proven that he can win at the highest level. I mean, think about it. Texas Tech's in the Elite Eight if Duke doesn't have their best offensive stretch of the entire year. Like, and, and that's not like, you know, trying to oversell it. They legitimately didn't miss a shot in the final eight minutes, right? And you got to tip your cap, give credit to them. Um, but Texas Tech lost by five, and Duke didn't miss in the final eight minutes. And so you think about that, and what happens if you play Arkansas? I don't know, but you're, you're literally talking about an eight minute stretch where you have an opportunity to go to the elite eight. Obviously it doesn't go your way. Congrats to Duke for capitalizing on that opportunity. But now without question, I think we can unequivocally say that Texas tech got the right guy. Kirby Hocutt did everything right. And Mm. by the way, you know, your staff is good when other, even if they're mid major programs, are taking assistance away from you. And that's exactly what happened to Texas Tech today with Telvin Hester, who is now the head coach at Louisiana Tech. So you think about what Texas Tech has and the culture that they have and everything. And I I, I would argue that right now today, after year one of Mark Adams, Texas Tech is in a much better spot than they would have been if Coach Beard had stayed. And the reason being is because you know what Texas Tech is now. You know what kind of culture they have. You don't have to worry about that cloud anymore. And now you know that Texas Tech, really, Mark Adams had never had to do that at a high level. And now you go into the offseason where, yeah, there's a little, you know, question mark in terms of, well, not even a little question mark. It's a big question mark. Is Kevin McCuller going to come back? Or is he going to keep his name in the NBA draft? And if he does come back to college, is he even going to come back to Texas Tech? I find it hard to believe that Kevin McCuller, who, again, is going into the NBA draft but keeping his eligibility alive, if he took his name out of the running in the NBA draft, I have a hard time seeing him playing college basketball anywhere else. Now, Terrence Shannon, on the other hand, yeah, I think he probably goes closer to home. And if I'm a betting man, which I work in sports betting, so I probably am a betting man, Lyle. um, I bet you he ends up at Illinois. Um, Closer to home, he's from Chicago. Really good program up there that's kind of underachieved, but we'll probably give Terrence a little bit better of opportunity to show that he can be the guy. Um, that's just my guess right now. But overall, I mean, this year for Texas Tech men's basketball is an overwhelming success. I will take one on the chin like Chris Rock did at the Oscars from Will Smith in saying that I didn't know what to expect. I, I, I'll be honest with you. Um, Going into the season, I probably overhyped the Red Raiders, but they exceeded my hype. Um, I I was probably I probably looked like a homer when it came down to it, and I said that Texas Tech would make the NCAA tournament, but they'd probably lose in the first round. Mm-hmm. I, I I thought they'd be in that eight nine seed range, and that's just because I didn't know what to expect. I knew Mark Adams was a good coach. I just didn't know if there would be a drop off or not. Because I think if we're being real about it, would anyone been a like, you know. It's not a crazy thought to think that there was a drop off in that situation. And that's no disrespect to Mark Adams or anything. They still would have been good, but I didn't expect them to be this good. And I think that that's a really big testament to the staff, but it's also telling you how great this program can be moving forward because you're going to get better players. And now COVID's gone, and that allows coaches to actually go out and see these recruits. I mean, you're a high school football coach. I can't even imagine what COVID was like in terms of just trying to get coaches to see football players that potentially could play at the next level in your program. And now you don't have those restrictions. People can come and actually see these players. And I think that that's great for programs like Texas tech who can get people on campus now to visit, because as we know, it's hard to get to Lubbock. Um, You got to take a flight most of the time. So yeah, man, I, I, I think that they, I mean, I, I've said it on Twitter and everybody's been tagging me in it and whatnot. I've, I've said this is the col- the golden age of Texas Tech men's basketball. And I think it's just going to continue. And the expectations will continue to go higher and higher for Texas Tech because you look at what Mark Adams did in the first year when people counted him out. Now you're going to have to think, okay, everybody's going to think that you're supposed to be great. How do you respond to those expectations? Because Texas Tech has always kind of been that underdog outside of one or two years. And now you're going to have all these expectations to compete at the highest level of the conference. You're in that conversation now. 
with, you know, the Baylors and the Kansases of the world um, in that tier one, obviously they should be ahead because, well, Kansas could win a national championship this year and Baylor won it last year. Um, but that's where you should be. And, and the expectations from here on out for me, and maybe this isn't fair, but Hey, this is what I think this program wants. Sweet 16. If you don't get there, that's not a great season anymore. And this year's a little different. I think they overachieved, but here moving forward, you got to make it the second weekend, man. That's the program expectations now, um, which is saying a lot because I've been one of those people that have said, if you expect your team to get to the sweet 16, you're crazy. Well, I think that there's a few programs that should have that mentality, right? I think if you go to Kansas, you better get to the second weekend. If you go to Duke, you better get to the second weekend. Um, Baylor, they didn't get to the second weekend, but you should get to the second weekend, right? Gonzaga, so on and so forth. And I think Texas Tech is in that group of, I would say 10 to 12 teams now um, that if they don't get it to the second weekend, I'm kind of surprised and they didn't meet expectations. So um, yeah, man, I'm just so excited about what this team could look like. I do think Kevin McCuller, again, this is my prediction. I don't know. Um, so don't come at me if you're listening to this and put it on Twitter that RC said he's coming back. No, this is just my prediction. I do think that if he does take his name out of the NBA draft, Kevin McCuller will play at Texas Tech. I know a lot of people are trying to read into that. Um, and if that's the case and you bring in another couple of transfers and whatnot, this is super early in terms of predictions where Texas Tech will be ranked. Texas Tech is going to be a top 12 team when the preseason polls come out. That's just my opinion. Yeah, I, I agree with, uh, you know, I agree with most of that. The only thing I say just from a coaching uh, standpoint um, is just realizing, I hope people realize how hard it is to keep um, – Oh, no yeah. doubt. Yes. Yeah. You know, yeah. Um, yes. The yes. NBA draft portal, you know, a lot of high school kids are getting left out right now because of COVID, but also because of the transfer deal um, too. So uh, it's tough for that, but um, just from a coaching standpoint, I, I, the only difference I'd say is just the expectation um, is an expectation, but at the end of the day, each time you go, it's, it's still, it's very hard to do. No doubt. Um, and those teams that, so I, I think, you know, in a sense, uh, I wouldn't say it's disappointing from my standpoint, but, you know, to have that expectation because every week anybody anybody can win. Um, and in the Big 12, everybody's good every year. So there's no guarantee sure. you're a top five team in that. So any year that you get to go to to the NCAA tournament or you get to go to the Sweet 16 is, I mean, it's a it's a great, I say great, um, just because it's so hard to do. There's a, I don't know how much is, 130 teams or something like that. So. No, I mean, yeah, I mean, there's 253 D1 basketball programs. Yeah. So, so, and you're, and you're, you're, you think about it, the past what, three out of the last four NCAA tournaments, you're one of the top 16. Yeah. And that's what I'm saying. Like, that's a, that's a steep, steep, uh, you know, sure. uh, steep deal to, to expect, even though you want to expect, it's a deep deal. And like I said, each year it changes the element of your team as far as people going to the draft. Uh, people transferring um, it's a lot too and like I said there's there's probably more to the story than we'll ever know or why um, you know uh, also I uh I uh, way undersold that by the way Lyle there's 350 yeah my bad, my bad. I way undersold yeah. that so you know I just I just think it's a it's a lot to it to get them together now I said he's got to reboot a little bit especially uh, you know if he goes into the NBA draft we got some people that left no telling who else will leave um, sure. who else comes and and so I just think like each year that you get to do that um, because of the transfer portal, you can have a brand new team next year at Texas Tech. So to, to expect something is great, but in all reality, with five new dudes, they have to mesh together. They have to do what they're supposed to do because you can you can coach your lights out, okay? You know what I'm saying? Even like Coach K, you know what I'm saying? Great coach. If they don't make every shot, he, it doesn't matter what game plan he had. Um, that's one thing I've kind of realized getting to be around great players. It's really the Jimmies and the Joes and how they are able to execute and play together. So, uh, with this new day, day and age from a coaching standpoint, I just think anytime you're able to get there is so good because of the movement, you know, back in the day, you mm -hmm. couldn't transfer, you couldn't leave. Um, now there's kids that are going to come to Texas Tech that this is their fourth school. This is their third school. And looking so at I, you, Adonis Arms. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I just think that. 
um, it makes it harder for these coaches to – they don't have some of these guys for four years to put in place. Um, and just, you know, being a coach, my first year being a head coach, it takes time. I've learned that. You can't just come yeah. in here and whip it up for the most part um, unless you've got some, you know, some, some stud athletes, um, you know, that are that are here uh, at your school. But, I mean, people got to realize this man is, is going to start from scratch next year. He may have one or two, but still, he's still start, starting – from yeah. The, so, um, I just think like we can't take for granted these these trips that we're doing. This, like you said, the golden era can't take advantage because, like I said, it's no, not it's not proper not. to get us there. You know. No, I, I'm right there with you. Um, and again, I I think when I say those expectations, it's because of what they've done, right? Mm-hmm. And I I think probably my expectations are too low compared to what the guys in the locker room have. But you're absolutely right. You know. But expectations gotta- and reality are different. You have to, one, one of them in terms of expectations, that's just talk. Right. But actually making them come to fruition, there's actions involved in that. And sometimes other people have, you know, um, something to say about those actions just because you do have to play other teams. So, yeah, no, I'm right there with you. Like, like Crab, you know, Crab was a big one. And, you know, he was a, he was a, he made a lot of plays. And did, did we reload? Yeah, did we have some people? But it wasn't um, his, what he brought to the field, I think a lot of people, like I think that's the biggest thing people too fail to realize, the importance of like Bryce Williams, how much um, he takes where they have to pay attention to know where he is. You know, perfect example, Steph Curry. It doesn't matter where he is. If he has the ball, he draws that much attention, which makes other people's job easier. So there's a lot of elements to the game. I think that people forget and say, well, that guy, you know, he was okay, but no, you don't know what it is. And you don't know the next guy that steps up when all these other guys leave, if he'll be able to do it, because like I said, it changes. Um, It was different when Crab was on the other side and I was running routes and it was one-on-one versus my senior year when it was two people on me and other people running one-on-one. So um, I just think from an athletic – Humble brag with the double team there. Hey, you know, I think they thought I was <laughs> number, I think they thought I was <laughs> number five, but I'll take it, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I, love, I love the humble brag there, though. You know how many, you know how many times I've been double teamed in my life, Lyle? Hey, when you I don't need at, fingers, you don't need fingers. When I look at Twitter, brother, they be coming at you sometime with double teams, man. I'll be, yeah, out they the, Twitter's different. Twitter's <laughs> different. Yeah. Yeah. I get some angry mobs on there sometimes with some of my opinions. Yeah. <laughs> that's fine. No, that's Twitter. Who cares? Who cares? <laughs> Who cares about it at all? But no, yeah, I, I get it. And, and you talk about what this team could look like next year. You're bringing in one of the best point guards in the country. Um, the 68th ranked player, according to 24-7, um, and Richard Isaacs, a.k.a. Pop-Pop Isaacs. Um, then you have Lamar Washington, who was a three-star commit, top 165 player in the country. And then you got Robert Jennings as well from right down the road from me in Dallas. Not to mention you already have, which is going to be a top five transfer in the class. Like, I, I don't care who else joins. Jalen Tyson will be a top five transfer in the class. So you already have him on campus. So you're going to go a little bit younger in this. Um, I would suspect that you see Jalen Tyson starting next year as well as Pop Pop Isaac. So two of these newcomers will start um, that are younger, which I think is good for Texas Tech. Um, but yeah, it, it's it's interesting. I, I think overall, though, by far this season, by far this season is a glowing success. I mean, I, if anybody says anything differently, I don't think they understand what happened um at texas tech and that's fine not everybody pays the tech, attention to the red raiders i mean um people have other things to do we have uh you know some people have hobbies and i pay attention to texas tech athletics so there you go um but i did want to talk about more um basketball we'll talk about a little bit more in future podcasts in terms of when these transfers come in because right now you know that a few of these guys are gone obviously just because they don't have any eligibility left um one word answer. Yes or no. Does Kevin O'Banner come back to Texas Tech? One word answer. Yes. I agree. I think he does as well. I think he uses that eligibility. Um, it'll be interesting to watch. He's another guy that's super interesting to watch, though, um, in terms of will he come back. Speaking of interesting to watch, Texas Tech baseball. I'll tell you what. That was a hell of a series against number two Texas at the time. Texas Tech was ranked number 16. Now they are ahead of the Longhorns in the r- rankings. Um, they are the number seven team in the country. Texas is number eight. And then you have Oklahoma State at six with TCU at number 12. So four teams in the Big 12, in the top 12. 
But I mean, Texas Tech was just absolutely phenomenal the first two nights of that series as Texas really just didn't know what even hit them, if I'm being honest about it, um, in the first game when Kurt Wilson stole home. I mean, I have no idea um, what that pitcher was doing, to be honest. All right, so, Lyle, I'll be honest with you. We stopped the podcast there for a split second. Um, dog is okay for those wondering. Do- it was a dog issue. It's okay. Um, but you know who wasn't having an issue this past weekend was Texas Tech baseball. We started talking about that just a little bit. Um, I do think that one person, you know, did have an issue with somebody, and maybe it was a certain 25 to 30 somebodies, and that was Kurt Wilson because he took out a lot of anger on the UT baseball program, stealing home, didn't even give the UT pitcher a chance to throw him out at the plate on Friday night. And then he was like, you know what? Hold my beer. I have one. And by the way, Kurt Wilson can say, hold my beer. He is a legal drinking age. So you're welcome, America. Mm -hmm. And then he said, hold my beer. I'm going to hit a walk-off tater. And when I say tater, I mean grand tater. I'm talking fully loaded taters. You love some good tater fries, okay? He hit a tater. Just a what I like to call a piss missile, Lyle. He hit a piss missile out of the ballpark, and Texas Tech took the series against number two. Texas is now ranked ahead of them, according to D1 Baseball. You said you got to watch these games. What was your overall impression? Because I'll be honest with you, Lyle. I think I might have sold the Red Raiders a little short because I said to begin the year, I would be really surprised that they had a chance to host a super regional. And now that was just the first weekend of big 12 play, but that team is a lot more further along than I thought they would be at this point in the year. Yeah, no, I, I I thought they were, uh, I thought they were super gritty, super exciting. And I I just think, I don't know. I I think that they were up for the game too. Don't get me wrong. I think they're way ahead of what I thought as well. Um, but they're definitely up for this game. I think um, I think it's always been kind of a rivalry with Texas, but um, I don't know. I just think lately when we've been going against Texas, it's become personal. Don't tell UT fans uh, that. Yeah, don't I know. Don't tell UT fans. They're all up in my mentions, man. Yeah, they're haters, you know. And, and I just think they were up for the game, uh, up for the, the, the challenge. And um, like I said, I think that we have the ability to play. Like I said, our coach is great. He's a great coach. So there's no doubt about it. I know they would be ready now um, that I think they were going to jump on him like that and, and be as exciting. No, I didn't. Um, but like I said, they're a fun team to watch. We have a lot of guys, um, a lot of young guys at that that are, that are making plays. Yeah, they are. Um, you know what I'm saying? Hitting the ball well. And so um, it's just great to see, especially this early in the season. You know, I, I kind of feel like um baseball is kind of like basketball you know most of the time it don't get good till the end it's good but it gets better as the season goes it yeah. takes a minute to go and I I'm, I'm with you man they're way ahead of what I thought and um it was great to see and it kind of shows where we're at um and where we could be uh more importantly um so to to be the series with the number two team I mean like I said that's stuff we we cannot take for granted and, uh, you know, most people are like, well, we've been good. That's what we're supposed to do. No, nah, you're not supposed to to beat the number te- two team at all times. When you do that, it's, it's a great thing. So, um, like I said, Coach Tad, he's the man. Um, if he ever talks to me, I'm going to make sure I bring my notepad so I can uh, try to get it together. But he's definitely done a great job. But, I mean, he knows he knows uh, the guys that he's getting that can play. He knows. That's what he does. I think that's what he's um, been great at at Texas Tech, um, getting those guys. So, I think we, I think actually he was probably laughing at us listening to our podcast because he knew what he got. He knew what he's getting and he knows. Probably, what he, so. <laughs> probably not the first time that anybody in a Texas Tech athletic program has laughed at me. I mean, they probably laughed at me walking into, you know, the press conferences like, who the hell is that kid? He looks like he's 12. Why are they letting middle schoolers in here? Hey, that's the same thing they said to me when I was on the podium. Yeah, hey, y'all got the wrong guy. So it's all the. Uh, so and I'm then good. they look at the, you know, the charts and everything. It's like, oh, maybe we did. <laughs> Just saying record books speak volumes. Yeah. I mean, for me with Texas Tech, it was never of like, I thought they'd be good. Like I really did. Um, but I didn't think they'd host a super regional. I didn't think they'd be that good. I thought they'd host a regional and then they'd have to go out and maybe go to Knoxville or something like that. And I don't think that was crazy. Um, I do think that 
it's crazy how how much further along these freshmen are than I thought that they would be. And, you know, the ones that really stand out to me are Hudson White. He stands out tremendously behind the plate. Reminds me so much of Braxton Fulford. I think he's a little further along than Braxton Fulford, at least at the dish behind it. Um, maybe a little bit behind him, but I mean, he's going to be a stud for years to come in the 806. I love Owen Washburn. Um, his dad was one of the best outfielders the Angels have ever had um, at the major league level. And now he's here at Texas Tech, proving that those genes and those bloodlines run deep in the Washburn family. And he's been great as a freshman. Um, you got some pitchers out there as well that have been good. And Molina, who's a true freshman, who's your Sunday starter, um, didn't go his way on Sunday um, against Texas, who did take the third game of the three game series, 12 to one. But you talked about Texas. I mean, they were the preseason number one, and I'm not trying to crap on Texas in terms of, hey, they're the preseason number one and they're not living up to expectation. Listen, Texas is really freaking good. Like that is a good team. If they won the college world series, it shouldn't surprise anybody. They're that good. But I think it shows more this weekend, not how good um, or how bad UT played. I think it's more of a testament to how good the Red Raiders played and how good they can be moving forward. There's a ton of talent in this lineup. It's all led by Jace Young. We know that he's going to be a top five, top seven pick in the major league draft later this year in June. I mean, he's just, he's awesome. It, it's almost at this point, there has to be a bet in that family. Who's going to get drafted first? Is it going to be Jace or is it going to be Josh, right? Because yeah. we know Josh went in the top 10. He went to the Rangers. Does Jace go before that? I say yes, but um, I thought my favorite thing all weekend, though, outside of Kurt Wilson, was how how much personality this team has, and it's all centered around Jace Young, right? Like when he hit that no doubt bomb on Friday night, I was thinking to myself, "Oh, this weekend's going to be fun. Like this weekend is going to be fun because he." First and foremost, he's just showing his personality. He's a, he's a lot more out there in terms of personality than his brother was. His brother was just calm, cool, and collected. Maybe talked to his bat a little bit, went up there, and just absolutely raked. Jace does the same thing, but he'll let you know about it. And he let Texas know about it. And you saw him do the Juan, so, uh, Juan Soto up there at the plate where he's creeped up a little bit. Like, dude, come on. We knew that was a ball. Um, it was just – it was it's fun to see the personality of this team and – there hasn't been this much personality on a UT baseball team, at least one that I've covered when I was out there. And now that I'm watching, like it, it's just so much personality. And I think that that's perfect um, just for Texas tech from the standpoint of, is this the most talented Texas tech baseball team that coach Tadlock has ever had? No, I don't think anybody should say that, but I think that they have a lot more grit than other teams um, that coach Tadlock has had. And I think grit sometimes can make up for that talent. Um, and you know, I'm not saying, I think every team that coach Tadlock has had works hard, but some obviously work harder than others. I think this team is one of those teams that works harder than others that puts in that time that tries to go that extra mile because they might realize like, Hey, maybe we aren't the most talented team in the world, but that doesn't mean we can't beat your ass any given weekend. And mm -hmm. I think that's, that's what they proved. And, I, and now they're skyrocketing up the rankings. And we, that might even be wrong in the sense of maybe this is one of the most talented teams that Coach Tadlock has had. But coming into the year, I, I definitely didn't think that. And now expectations are at a level where it's like, okay, maybe they can host a Super Regional again. And if they host a Super Regional again, all bets are off. Because if it goes through Lubbock, we know it's one of the hardest places to play, especially when it's hundred and however many degrees on that field um, in June. Obviously, last year it didn't go the way the Red Raiders. Stanford came in and beat them. But, I mean, if you're coming out to Lubbock, you know you're going to be in a hostile environment. You know it's going to be hard to win. It's one of the hardest places to win. But this weekend, this past weekend, I should say, was even cooler because it's the first time Texas Tech baseball has won a series at home against Texas since 2000. So over 20 years. There you go. So. Oh. Really cool weekend for Texas Tech in terms of that. And, I mean, again, the expectations are just absolutely sky high right now. Um, it just seems like there's always something to talk about in this athletic program, you know, on a positive note, right? Like, and it's success from a team, maybe an individual as well. But it just seems like there's never a dull moment, maybe outside of like a month when everybody goes home for the summer um, in July or something like that, and we all take a break. But um, starting in August – all the way to really June every year, we're talking about a, at least one successful athletic program playing at that given time. So 
it's a lot of fun. Um, that's for sure. And Texas Tech baseball is just getting started. Um, this week they play Stephen F. Austin, and then they head out to Lawrence, Kansas to play the Jayhawks. And then they head out to Phoenix. No, not to play uh, Arizona or Arizona State. It'll be Grand Canyon. So there you go. So a lot of fun. Um, but yeah, man, I mean, we, we've got a lot more podcasts coming. And you know what the best part about it is? We'll have some spring football to talk about here soon. Yes, indeed. We're going to check it out and, um, like I said, um, see what they're talking about. Been a few times, like we talked about on the podcast. Yeah. But, um, like I said, just going to bring y'all some more information. Um, Coach, Coach McGuire is doing a lot, a lot of cool stuff um, involving former players and um, just people that have been around the program. So uh, it, it's awesome to see. You can feel the energy. You can um, feel what he's got going on there. So I look forward to it. Um, uh, we talk about recruiting all the time, but just the overall culture is changing. Um, and like I said, it, it, it's awesome, man. So um, shout out to Coach McGuire and everybody else um, that's making it happen. Yeah, absolutely. And Texas Tech did add on their defensive line yesterday. Miles Cole had transferred from the University of Louisiana Monroe, 6'6", 285, super bendy at that size going to be a really quality addition to the trenches. And that's exactly where coach McGuire and crew want to build this team is in the trenches. You know, the skill position players will come to Texas tech, but you got to get those core guys to protect those skill position players or give enough time to get them the damn ball. So um, definitely, or take the ball away, I guess, don't, you know, it goes both ways, I guess, you know, don't want to shout out. The, don't Offense, they're going to get it defense. out pretty fast. Watch it. Yeah. Watch it. We got pretty fast. Ain't yeah, right? yeah. <laughs> we might be talking to some of those coaches too here. So you're going to want to subscribe to the podcast, whether that's on Spotify or right here on YouTube. Be sure to hit that big red button right below and then hit that bell right next to it to stay in the know on everything Texas Tech. He's Lyle. He's only caught the second most touchdown passes in Texas Tech history. It's really not that big of a deal. Just put it on a T-shirt and it would sell millions. I'm RC. I don't know why the hell he likes talking to me for so long, but here we are at this point. We appreciate y'all tuning in to the Back to 12 podcast. Be sure to go follow Lyle on Twitter. What is that again? Give the handle. It's at Coach L-L-E-O-N-G. That's what we love to hear. And I am at RCMB323. Uh, just past 5,000 followers, by the way. Hey, everybody follow them except for CBS and ABC and Skip and uh, everybody. Yeah, I don't, I, don't, I don't think those people give a damn. Yeah, they're on there, brother. They got they're on there? Now. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I, I haven't seen them, but you have. You got a lot more intel than I do. So yeah. there you go. You're obviously a lot more connected. He's Lyle. I'm RC. We appreciate y'all tuning in. Next week, we'll be talking about some spring football and uh, maybe another Texas Tech Big 12 series win after they go up to Lawrence. We'll catch y'all later. As always, stay safe, but most importantly, wreck them.